you guys. So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on my two piece straw topper molds. So this is what one of the molds looks like. And this is what the finished product looks like. So what you basically do, and I'll show you step by step, but when the uh, both pieces will be um, glued together and they form the straw topper. And I'll show you, um, this side actually has a clear coat on it. This side is just straight out of the mold. So you can kind of tell the difference on that. So basically what I did was I mixed up some epoxy. I put glitter in it. Um, I mean, you can use alcohol inks and other things as well. And um, I don't have exact measurement for this one that we're gonna do today because I just got it in. So we're gonna give it a shot. But these keep in mind, the bottom of the mold is actually gonna be the inside of the straw topper that you're not gonna see. So what you're gonna see on these is the top part. So when you're mixing in glitter, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that um, there's plenty in there that it's not gonna to sink to the bottom because you're not, then the bottom's not gonna be seen. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't have exact measurements yet. I will let you know as soon as I get this poured. But um, basically, you're going to want to make sure that you fill both cavities and you're going to want to cover this piece going um, vertically because that's where the straw fits in. So it's a super thin layer, but just definitely make sure that you give it all, get it all covered. So I like to go in with either muddling tools or with this one, popsicle stick works too. And just to get everything filled in. And I do like to go with my muddling tool, this one, around just to make sure there's no air pockets, especially along the edges that's where they seem to form the most <clears throat> now keep in mind um, these molds I do not recommend taking heat to um, you know you can melt the mold and then it will be ruined so um, what I like to do to get rid of air bubbles in these is spritz some alcohol on there I don't have any up here with me right now, so I um, I didn't show that, but you can get a little spritz bottle, spritz some alcohol, let the bubbles rise, and then do that. Um, or I also like to take a straw and just blow some air on there. So that's another way you can get um, air bubbles out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the second one. And also if you are not using fast set epoxy and your epoxy has longer work time, you can actually let your epoxy sit in your mixing cup first to let some air bubbles rise to the top. Just make sure that you get the air bubbles off the surface of this one because like I said, the top of this, what we're seeing now is what you're gonna see with the finished product. So I'm just making sure there's no air pockets. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, let this sit for a second, let the air bu bubbles come up. Um, let me see if I can see how much epoxy I used. You'll have to excuse me, I'm trying to wipe away glitter and resin to see. Um, so I mixed up 20 cc's plus a ton of glitter. So it brought me more to about 25 cc's. Now I'm down to about 10. So I used about 15 cc's of volume total. It was 10 cc's um, of epoxy with glitter mixed in, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cure. And when it is all cured, I'm going to come back and show you how we're going to put it together. Okay guys, I'm back. I let these cure. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pop them out of the mold so we can get them 
together. So that's one side. Get this one out. And that's the other side. Now, as you can see, this is why it's the bottom. The bottom piece is the inside because it has that indent in there where the straws are going to go. And then these two pieces go together to form the straw topper. So what I like to do is I like to get the medicine cups from um, that I like to use to measure out my epoxy. And I turn it upside down. I put some clear stick tape on there. If you have like um, the glue dots from scrapbooking, that works as well. And I go ahead and I stick one end, one side of it. Now this is the outside, remember that, to the bottom. I use that for easy handling. It just makes it easier to handle. And then what I'm going to do is take some super glue. Now, if you have some other type of permanent adhesive that you like to use, then by all means use it. Um, super glue I like for stuff like this because it's fast, it's easy. And I'll show you because I'm going to actually put a top coat on it to kind of seal it all together anyways. So I'm just going to put a little glue. You don't want to go too heavy because then it will seep off the edges and cause a sticky super glue mess. So if you can see, I only just did a little on both sides. And now I'm just going to set the other piece on there and you just want to make sure that it's lined up best as possible. And then I'm just going to press down. And as you press down, try not to <laughs> move it <laughs> like I did. Okay. So I'm going to sit here, hold this for this, the super glue to dry. And then what I'm going to do is mix up some epoxy to actually coat it on the outside. And I'm going to seal the edges too, right here. And I like to do that because it's going to shine it up a little bit. It gives it a nice little top coat. Um, it also gives you the option to put a fun decal on here. So you could put a decal on here. These diamond ones would be good for like bridesmaids or just engaged or stuff like that. And um, then you can seal it with your top coat um, epoxy. That's what I like to use. I like to use epoxy. Um, so I'm going to go mix them up really quick. I will be using the counterculture DIY facet epoxy. I like it for things like this because it mixes fast, it goes on there fast, it dries and cures fast, and it leaves a super shiny finish like on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and I will be right back. Okay, so I forgot a step and I just thought about it after I ended the video, so I'm going to insert this in somewhere. Um, <laughs> sorry guys. I forgot to tell you that I like to um, clean these off with some rubbing alcohol. Um, that way it can get off any kind of mold release agents or anything that was in the mold, fingerprints from handling it if you weren't wearing gloves. Because when you put your top coat on, it um, has a chance of repelling off if there's oils or anything on there. So keep that in mind. Um, just prep it like you would anything, like if you were to do a cup, if you are into tumblers. Um, you just wanna have a clean surface, so some rubbing alcohol. Um, definitely helps. Okay, so I went ahead and I mixed up my facet. Um, I wasn't careful on how fast I mixed it up because I'm just putting it on as a clear coat so I'm not too worried about bubbles. So basically I just, I have about five cc's in here. It's more than plenty. Um, you probably don't even need that much. So you can always uh, mix them up and coat these if you're using it for um, something else. Just keep in mind that it is facet, so it sets very fast, and you have minimal working time with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and coat the top of this and the sides. I mostly like to do this so I can seal the sides, so this way, let's say um, it's dropped or something like that, there's no chance for it to break apart, or very minimal chance at that. 
And I do suggest if you are selling these um, to include a care card like you would if you were selling tumblers or something else. So your customers are aware that these still are made from epoxy and special care is required. Um, like no dishwashers and no soaking, things like that. So just keep that in mind. Keep it away from baby's mouse. I know they're small, so you kind of want to cover all your bases with that. So I'm just going to go through with a gloved finger, make sure that everything's coated. You don't want to do um, a sopping wet coat to where it's dripping off the bottom because that just causes extra steps for you to have to clean later. Um, just enough to get an even shine coat on the whole thing and to see if I missed any spots. And then basically I'm just gonna let this set and then once it's cure, now Fast Set has a complete cure time of about two hours depending on the environment it's in. Um, I'm gonna turn it around and do the same steps on the back just to make sure that I have a coat on both sides. So, and then that'll be it and it's, it's good to go. Um, keep in mind, if you are using Facet, that um, there are um, less UV inhibitors in there, so if you're using it on white, um, it can have the chance of yellowing in the sun, but I like to use it on things like this, just for convenience purposes. Otherwise, um, your favorite epoxy, if it has a nice shiny finish, would do well as well. So, and that's it, and you're good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to put in the comments below. Um, if you are not on my Jugs private Facebook group yet, head on over there because I do monthly giveaways and contests. And um, I let everyone know all the new products first on there. Um, you're kind of in the, in, the, in the loop first in the group. So um, I will go ahead and link that as well. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.